weighed the universe. Eight. The answer? No. Number eight, ladies and gentlemen, of the jury. If you remember, the first thing that should come to mind when it says factor of trinomials, you're going to get two binomials, but step number one, and I cannot emphasize this enough, Step number one is always, always, always see if you they have a see if you can factor something out of all terms. Factor out any common factors. And if you look at this, boom, boom, and boom, the only thing they have in common are they all have x's. And how many x's do they have? You can take an x squared out of all three terms. What's left? When you take that out, is this. And then once you get to that, you see if this will factor into two binomials. The x squared has to stay outside of that parenthesis. I believe, uh, do you want to wait for this to be positive and that to be positive, or just for them both to be positive? And what times what gives you 12? And add it together gives you 7, 4, and 3. seven for extra credit? Can you do seven for extra credit? Well, why not? Yay. That includes me not explaining it. You'd have to figure it out on your own. That's so right. investigation number eight. Well, I believe it has something to do with what? Y equal and K times X, Y, Z or whatever. Yeah, Y equals K, Y, X, Z. Yeah. It's, instead of just having one thing, you have two. Yeah, constant or whatever it is, which means things go up and down, they go all over the place. Gauss is pretty simple. What was the answer for number 10? Uh, the answer for number 10, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, 3x plus 2 times x minus 1. Wait, is that hand up? Is that my pen, by the way? This is my pen. No, those pen bottom from Target. Is it on sale? Um, Wait, did you buy it or did you buy it? My mother bought okay. it. Wait, what's what? Uh, I was hoping there'd be something back here <coughs> on the bottom of this page. Find the probability of rolling the sum of three or a sum of eleven on two number of cubes. Ah, oh, ah. I would say, did I give you the little sheet that had the table? No. Here. Yes. Yes. What? Yes. What? Thank you. Yeah. And Faith, you can make one yourself. Faith, Faith, hold up that little sheet. I would re highly recommend that you pull that bad boy oh, out and have it have a test. And I don't have it with me right here, but this is what. Remember, probability of or, if you're doing the probability of the sum of three 
or the probability of 11. Okay, notice it doesn't say and. If it said and, they, they would have to happen. This means either one could happen. When that happens, you add their probabilities together. If it's an or, you add the probabilities together. There's always 36 combinations when you roll two dice. And how many threes are there? Well, you could have a one and a two and a two and a one, I believe. That's the only options? Yeah. So there's two out of the 36. To get an 11, you can have a five and a six or a six and a five, which is also two. So for those both to happen, you add those together and you get four out of 36. Hopefully the probability is one ninth. Just but remember, I get to this part of algebra very infrequently. Well, I guess half the time I'm guessing. Sometimes I do it right, sometimes I don't, Carter. I would like to just write answers down like some of you. Oh, it's seven thirds. Hey, how'd you get that? That was small sarcasm, sorry. That was inappropriate and I should have never said it. Parker? Mm -hmm. Maybe four. Who? Four. 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 Oh. Oh. Number four. Well, Parker, what would, how, how do you think you should do number four? I'm just asking. Back to Sure. You could <coughs> multiply them together and then factor them. Mm -hmm. Or you could just factor them the way they are. And I'm not sure which would be better, but the square root of 2 doesn't get any lower, so it stays the square root of 2. But the square root of 32 is the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. Do you want me to continue to factor all the way down to the prime numbers, or can I just, would you agree with me that the square root of 16 is, has a perfect square? Can I stop there and say, the square root of 16 is 4? Right? Mm -hmm. And then, Two square roots of two give you a normal two, so all the square root stuff goes away and you just get eight. Which, Parker, if you were to multiply these together, what do you get? Two times 32 is 64. And maybe you'd recognize that 64 is a perfect square. And you get it off the bat. I just like that this is right in between. I wonder, why does it make like, see it's got like a black line there? Gauss! How do you do 11? Oh, Lord. Uh, 37. Uh, 37. Oh, and now 15. Okay. How do you do number 11, ladies and gentlemen? Um, I don't know if I want to make a table on this. I suppose I should go with the way I kind of showed you, I suppose. Here would be, if you're setting this up using a table, which is kind of what we've done since the seventh grade here. My percentages here and my actual costs you know, when you buy a car, the guy selling, the dealership that sells the car, Wade will tell you, splits the money that somebody pays you into the commission for the salesperson, and then the rest of it is how much the dealership makes. And then this is the total amount made. Well, the total is 100%. A little salesman dude, it's 12.5%. And the dealer then would get, what, 78.5%, no, 88.5%. Those dealers, they are working good. Now, where does $2,000 go? Is that how much commission, how much the car sells for, or how much the dealer makes? That's how much the commission they want it to be. So that $2,000 would go right here. So if you're looking at that in terms of making a fraction out of it, again, this is way too big. You end up with this equaling that. 12.5 over 100 
equals 2,000 over what number? Wait, is this? Is there a simple way to do this? Maybe if you were mathematical, you would know that this fraction here is actually what? 125. It's actually 1 one eighth. eighth. If you divide this by 12.5, if you divide 100 by 12.5, you get 8. But if you don't know that, I suppose we have to do this out. We would get 12.5 times n equals 100 times 2,000, which is 2,000 with two more zeros on it. And believe it or not, if you divide this into that, I'm not going to do the crazy math for you, you get 16,000. A quicker way, if you're thinking about it, is, well, no, I'm not going to do it a quicker way. Again, hopefully you could recognize. Anytime you see one, two, and a five together, you should think about the fraction one eighth because it really, you know, same thing with six two five. Six two five, you should think about. Anybody? Seven two five, seven eight, eight, six two five, seven five eighths. Five eighths. What is seven eighths? Eight seven five. You actually, you probably have. Don't you have the little reference sheet there? Yeah. You should have it there yeah. Tyler O'Connor. Uh, no. Again, I'm always scared when it's a Tyler O'Connor question. Mm -hmm. Which is awesome. No. It goes from 16 to 23, which is $7. Well, you, that, that is the only way. 17 is so easy because. Just make a table. Just make a table. Right. Because I did. it's not a complete. It's not like proportional, because zero shirts, well, zero shirts will cost zero dollars. One shirt would cost more than what this thing would here. And the, the boys, Carter A kind of did it, kind of set it to you here. The really the best and the only way to do it is this. If two shirts cost $16, three shirts cost $23, you just have to understand that this was a difference of one shirt, and every shirt is a difference of seven dollars. You cannot you cannot go by the uh, this being a direct variation thing because eight times two is sixteen, but three times eight is not twenty is not twenty three. Yeah, so you just have to look at you just have to look at what this says. One shirt costs seven dollars. So if you're looking at five shirts, that's 14 more dollars, which would be 37 smackers, if you will. You could, it is probably a linear function, but you just have to look at it in terms of how much each shirt is going to cost. It's actually the slope. That would be the slope, wouldn't it? Is it the slope? It is the slope. Probably. What is the change? It's a change in y, which is? over the change in x. y equals 7x. But the question is, where does it cross the y-axis? That would be your question. No, you'd have to take 7 away from that. You'd have to take 14 away from that. 9. 2. X plus 2. Not 9. Not, he said 7. 7x plus 2. <laughs> Gauss. How do you do 18? I don't want to do 18. Amelia, I'm going to guess if you didn't get 18, you way overthought it. Because in math, it. what does this word mean? So all you're doing is multiplying those two numbers together. 140% as a decimal is? No, that's 14%. 140% as a decimal, you back it up two places, it's 1.4. means 140 out of 100, which if you move the decimals over is 1.4. What's 1.4 times 35? 4 times 35 49. is what? 140. 35 and 140 is 390? Is that what the answer was? What's 49? 
<laughs> Wait, it was 490, which is 49 with the decimal point. That's not what I did. I got the same answer. I did a table. I, I did, did a box. percent box. Yeah. I just multiplied. Yeah. Percent box are great, but that's, that's, that's how you talk. Just, like, there are sometimes easier ways to do it. it. I like the hard yeah, I could have done 40% or 35. It's like it's like finding tax and tip. You can make percent boxes all you want for that, but just take twenty percent of the price. I rather you'd get it that way than not know at all. Yes, wait. I would like to know what fourteen is asking for. I don't know. What is fourteen? Is it on this page? Yeah. Uh, I'll go down. What are you talking about? I don't even have my pretest out anymore. A student spins the spinner below and flips a fair coin. Make a table to show the possible outcomes of the experiment. So, here's your table. What two things are you comparing? You've got the spinner, and you've got a coin, which you don't see. I will draw one for you. So here is your table. You just have to do this. I would make the top side the spinner. And with the spinner, what are your choices to get? Red, red, yellow. Red, one, red, two, and yellow. And with the coin, which is this side, what are, what are your choices to get? Heads. Heads or tails. That is a lot more complicated than that. Well, probably is. So if you do all the combinations, you get red sub one. T, red sub 2, T, yellow, T, uh, red sub 1, head, you might put head, red sub 2, head, and yellow, head. Then you have to find like a probability or something. All right, then the probability of each outcome. Well, so the, so the probability of this, they just said probability of a red and a what? Oh, red in the head, it doesn't matter. Probably the red in the head, it doesn't matter. You've got red head, red head, which is two out of six combinations, which is one third. Probability of a red tail is the same thing, because you've got two of those. And the probability of a yellow head and a yellow tail is just one third and one third. Because you got double the head. thirds and two one sixths. The ones with the reds, the probability is one thirds. And if it's yellow tail, it's one sixth. And if it's yellow head, it's one sixth or head yellow, whatever way you want to say it. Two one six. It's a tree diagram. We could have done the tree diagram. Tree diagram. They could have done the tree. Put the heads and the tails first. You still yeah. just get six. Eastgate. The answer to three. What did you get? Uh, two is those two times of two is square root of x y. Yes, two times the square root of x y is the correct answer. Park Park. Mm -hmm. Five. It's a great question. Am I not doing it anymore? No, you can still do that one. Find the product. Well, if we use our old friend foil. Two first terms is a squared. The one outside term is a negative 4a. The inside term is a positive 4a. And then the last term is 4 times negative 4, negative 16. These are opposite terms, so they go away. So you just have a squared. commission, children, you just have to know that you take your percent of your commission 
times the total price, and that's how much money you're going to make. Equals dollars for you. A simple way to have done this would have been just taking, you know you want to make $2,000. You know your percent. My percent was 12.5%. I just need to know what the total price of the car was. 12 and a half times what number? $2,000.
Dad, Dad. Happy birthday. birthday. And he tries to get the uh, numbers to work out to like birthdays and things like that. Wicked smart. Parker. It's 13. Did you get this wrong or why am I doing I this? I did get this wrong. So I'll make sure we're doing this with a I like to review with a purpose. Just remember when you do these asymptote things, ladies and gentlemen, okay, this you, ladies and gentlemen, it's really pretty simple because you know that you can't get a zero on the bottom of the fraction. So whatever number would give you a zero is the x1. What would give me a zero down there? X when x is 5. So if I were graphing this, where x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's my vertical thing that the thing can't approach. And my y1 comes from where, Carter A? Zero. Why is it zero? Because there's nothing there. Because whatever number follows this is whatever the y answer can't be. And in, that, in this case, it's a zero. So here, where y is zero, I should do a different color. And if you were asked to graph it, what would the graph of that look like? Point and point. Those rational expressions. If this was a one, then this would be a one. If that was a seven, that'd be a seven. If it was negative six, it'd be negative six. A good way to think about it would be when is x minus 5 equals 0 and solve that equation? At 5, at 5, when x is 5. Evelyn? For number 2, what would it look like if there was a negative uh -oh. correlation or a no correlation? What? Look back what would it look like? Books? Like negative. Well, negative. 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 That's a positive. I know that's a Negative is negative. Negative would look yeah. like this. So the lines would form a line and they'd split the difference in the trend line would look like that. That's negative because it goes down. Evelyn, no correlation means that when you look at the dots, there's just nothing. You can't tell. There's no line that they would form that it would just be scattered all over the place. No correlation. Connect the dots. Negative correlation. Positive correlation. Nice. No, it has to be to connect the dots. Yeah, it's like it has to be connected. That is beautiful. <laughs> Does that help? Yes. So much so. That is so beautiful. You asked what was the thing? There's a negative part. Is that what you're pointing? Yeah. I just want to know because when it says on the test, I just want to like give this. Are there any other questions on the board? That's kind of a world record there. <laughs>